welcome back to the Wonder Forest channel. Uh, a couple months ago, I decided to give my Instagram profile a complete makeover. I actually wrote a post about reimagining your Instagram uh, profile, and I will link that below in case you guys want to check it out. And ever since then, since I started going with kind of a white, um, more minimalist theme, I have been asked constantly how I edit my photos and what apps I use. So I thought today I would kind of take the guesswork out of everything and show you exactly how I do it. So first of all, when I take a photo, I actually think about it first because I want to keep my theme in mind. So I usually do try to take my photos on a white background or on something white, um, something that has white in it uh, because the whole theme that I'm going for is not going to work if you have something with like a very dark background or something like that. So I've set up a little scene here for you guys just so that you can see kind of like how I would set something up. I don't usually just snap a photo, I will plan it first. So this is just a really quick example. Um, so I've got, this is just a small little uh, faux sheepskin rug from Ikea. And then I've got it on a chair here and then I've got my little um, fawn head with some uh, flower things in it and a gold pillow for a little contrast. So. This is something that I would set up, make sure that the lighting is good um, because if you're in a dark place, you really don't want to have, you know, a very dimly lit photo. So make sure you're either like by a window or somewhere bright. So let's do it. I'm going to snap a picture of this and then I'll show you how I edit it. All right, so I'm just using the default um, iPhone camera. I don't use any special camera or anything like that. And I always choose square just so that everything is properly proportioned in my photo and I don't have to worry about editing it afterwards. So we're just going to sort of line up our shot. I'm going to crop out most of the background so just the fur and the deer head is showing. And then I'm just going to take my picture. You might want to take a couple just to be sure. You can take like different angles. So here's my photo that I've taken and I'm going to show you how to edit it now. So the app that I always use for my edits is ViscoCam. Um, if you don't have it, you should definitely download it because it is pretty incredible. Um, so I'm just going to open it, go to my feed and I'm going to import that new photo that I took. So let's just pick one of them. So then I select it and choose to edit it. Now these are the filters that I currently have. Um, the one that I use the most is called HB1 and it doesn't come default with the app but if you go to the store you can download it for free. Um, if you go to the end of your filters here you'll see uh, an icon that says shop to focus for you. So click on the shop icon and then you should be able to find the HB1. Um, it's Hype Beast and it comes with two of them I believe. So HB1 and HB2. HB1 is the one that I usually use um, but I won't put it at the full rate. So I'll kind of bump that down maybe to eight or so and then apply that and then I'll go into the other edit modes and normally what I will do is, if it, the photo is a little bit dark, I'll just bump up the exposure a little bit. Not too, too much, because we're going to do a couple other edits in Instagram afterwards. So there's that, and then the contrast, sometimes I will just bump that down just a little bit. It kind of gives it more of a foggy feel. And then if my photo has a lot of color in it, what I will usually do is adjust the saturation because my feed is very minimal and I don't want a lot of color happening so I'll usually just bump that down a little bit sometimes all the way um, and then I will head over to the shadows and what this is going to do is the more you increase it the lighter the shadows are going to appear see so if it's at zero the shadows around the face right here are a bit darker but if you bump that up whoop, if you bump that up a little bit you'll see they start to disappear. I usually only do three or four on this. I think anything after that kind of starts to look a little funny. Um, so I'll save that. And then lastly, I will go into sharpen and I'll just put that on one.
to just bump it up a little bit in the sharpness area and then I will save it and then what I'll do is import that into Instagram and I'll do a couple edits in here as well so once it's an Instagram I'll go to the settings and they actually have some really good settings now um, they didn't before but I actually really like the choices that they give you. First of all, the brightness is something that, I don't know why Viscocam doesn't have brightness, they just have exposure, but I think brightness can make a big difference too, so I'll usually increase that a little bit just to make things really, really white, and then save that. And then again, the contrast, if you kinda wanna make it a little boggier looking and not so contrasty, you can bump that down a tad. Um, and then again, if you find it a little too saturated, you can adjust that again if you want. I'm just going to leave it this time. And then I really like the sharpen feature that Instagram has. So I'm just going to drag that up a little bit. Not all the way because it can start to look a little crazy, but about there is good. About 30% or so. And then I will save it. And then that's pretty much how I get the photos. I'll show you the before and after shots. So here's a before shot of this scene, and then here's my after shot. I really like things kind of washed out and a little bit dreamy feeling. Um, so that's how I go from that to this. Now another thing I'll do if I'm not using my camera phone or my uh, iPod camera to take the photo, I will actually take my photo with my DSLR. And then I always use this app, it's called Image Transfer, and I talk about this all the time because I love it so much. I believe it's a paid app, I don't remember, but I use this constantly, so it's well worth it. So basically I will open up the photo um, on my computer, and then the instructions basically tell you on your computer, go to this URL, and you can, from there on your computer, press upload photos, and then they will automatically transfer to your iPod. So it's a super fast way of getting your DSLR photos onto your iPod. And I do that a lot, and then I'll just go through the process again using ViscoCam and doing it that way. So I hope that helped you guys out. Uh, I hope that answered your questions. That's pretty much the process that I use for all of my photos, uh, even if they are darker, I'll do a, a few more like brightness enhancements and things like that, just using the same steps that I applied just now. So I would love it if you guys followed on Instagram at WonderForest and we can connect together. And I would love to see your photo edits as well, so feel free to tag me in any and I will check them out. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if it helped you. Please subscribe to the channel if you liked the kinds of videos that I've been putting out lately. And I will see you guys later. Hey Bye. friends, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to share with you how to make this affordable, incredibly easy kimono using a scarf. So for this project, all you'll need is a large scarf. I got this one at Forever 21 for I think $10 or so. To make sure your scarf is going to be big enough, you'll want to fold it in half and then wrap it around yourself and if it fits nicely in your arms and the length is good, then you are good to go.